Well, you just don't see that every day. There's a sign literally written on the back of this car. You just don't see that every day. You know, I find it's way easier to do these videos when the horses are racing good. Way easier. But I have to take a few minutes before I do my videos and just reflect. How did the horses actually do? Did anybody truly disappoint you? Is there anything that has to be worked on this week? There's no secret. You know, the horses that did well at the start of 2024 are sophomores that did really well. We're in soft, right? We put them in where they were going to do well. In many cases, we had trained or qualified them faster than they would have to race in the classes they were. We took advantage of what was given to us. And then you look at other horses. Sure, I, I believe that was a misstep with uh, insider trading this week, and we will, a misstep on her part, not on ours. And we'll get to the bottom of that in a second. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about the entire week. Um, Vaccaro Blue Chip, I looked at him today, and, and my first inclination was, we did scope him, and there was a couple of specks of blood. So my first inclination was he bled, but, and we likely will put him on Lasex, this is a hot summer coming. Um, but my take on that was, was I expecting too much of him? Did the horse on the front end just rip the soul out of a bunch of them? You know, I thought Vaccaro was soft and didn't finish up his mile great, but was he ready to trot any faster than he was? It's miling, trained him in 2-3, qualified in 2-3, trained him in 2-3 at the farm, which is probably a mile in two minutes. I would think he was ready for a little bit more, but then you factor in a very windy, rainy, kind of cold day, and the front end was hot. They run the front end really hot. The one thing I can say about Vicaro last year, he was a good horse, but if you stretched him in the first part of the month, if you go back and look at his races where he was just kind of rather ordinary or poor, it was always the same. Hot fractions up front. If you got moderate fractions and got him to climb up on a helmet, he'd race well. If you got everything your own way on the front end, he would race well. But if you get stretched, you know, you pulled him too thin, he wouldn't finish up well. He wouldn't race good. So I have to factor that in as, I, as I'm trying to get out. Just talk it out in my head. What happened? What did you just see? What, what actually took place? And where do we go from here? So as I said, the horses that have excelled so far in 2024, born to dance, stuffed him in the maiden claimer. One easy. Uh, I'm fancy like, put her in the climber. One easy. Uh, mounds for all, you get to fit the nomers of one, nomers of two. One easy. Blanton's blue, one easy in the, we put a tag on him also, I believe. And we're going to put one on him next week. But over here, we don't have the same option, right? Now, we had stake races starting. And the way that the insider trading, and I'd said this to my partner, Marco, this is like, as they say, deja vu all over again. Last year, we trained her down, sweetheart, did everything right, had trouble switching gears to the gate, made some breaks, put us in a spot where we missed a stake race, I believe. And um, and then shortly thereafter, got her squared away, but it took a few starts to really just screw her down tight, as I say sometimes. Are we there? Is this it? We're just going to shoot her the same way, hang her up the same way, and away you go? I'm creeping towards that point. As I told you the other day, there's two paths. Just let her come along on her own. You know, take all the boots back off her, put the bandages back on her, and let her come around. Or put the training wheels back on. Time to dance. Two very different schools of thought. Both have merit. I don't know which way I'm going to go yet. So, um... I'm going to talk about this week, but I will because I'm excited about what's going on Tuesday and it plays into what I just said. I'm going to go over. I'm not going to Kentucky on Monday or Tuesday this week. Kings County didn't get in. Week off isn't going to hurt them. Um, Militant didn't get in, uh, so we didn't have to go down and set the hobbles and race him. And, you know, my only real concern, John McDonald got around, got along with Brace for Landing, didn't race as great as we'd hoped, but got along with him. And got along well with Lover's Play. So I don't I don't need to go down there this week, which is frees up a lot of what I have to do. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna go over to the Meadows and I'm gonna qualify four horses. Memory and imagination. I've been eagerly awaiting this qualifier and his racing uh, season to start. I'm gonna qualify um, JK Victory. I made it as simple as I could. I'll be completely frank with everybody. I have not sat behind JK Victory this year. 
Jason McGinnis has done all the training, training him down. So I haven't sat behind him. I know that he said he went fast with him. He said he's fine. He said he got around the track. So I just, I made it as simple as I could. Jason, uh, I'm going to qualify at the Meadows on Tuesday. Should I qualify him? Should we train him? He said, qualify him. Do whatever you want. He is ready to go. And then qualify him. If you think he's ready to race, race him. If not, re-qualify him. That's kind of how I was thinking. And that's exactly what he said. So that that is exactly in lockstep with what I thought we should do. So JK Victory is going to uh, qualify on Tuesday. Uh, probably, if you asked me over the last three weeks, aside from any of the babies, all the horses we have that are getting ready to go, who is your most anticipated? Now, a lot of factors go into that answer. But if no factors went into it, just the horse I'm, I'm excited about right now, Arson. I trained him the other day. He felt unbelievably good. He's going to qualify. Now, in other news also, there is a non-winners of five, but not more than eight. He has eight wins. So there is a class to race Arson in. It's not a cakewalk. But if he's as good as I think he is right now, we'll qualify him this week, race him once, and then May the 4th is his first stake at the Meadows. Works out good. Now, pickpocket needs another week or two, and I'm going to take him over and school him. I couldn't qualify him anyway. We had some vet work done on him, and the withdrawal times on the medication used by Dr. Tessa is just inside. It's too close. It's not worth it. And they test the qualifiers, so there's no point in doing that. And I wasn't really interested in qualifying him anyway, but I am interested. Made a few little shooting adjustments, and we're going to take him over to the meadows and see how he trains. Now, he's plenty strong right now. But he's still a ways from the horse that you're like, that's our handball horse. He's not there yet. In fact, he's coming to a point, a crossroads, and I'll, I'll be the first one to say it out loud to everybody. He's coming to a place where it's either, all right, scrap the East Coast, handball included, let's go to Kentucky for the summer again where he excelled last year. That is one path. And the other path is a little more grand circuit where we skirt Oak Grove at the start. That fork in the road isn't that far ahead. And we will make a decision one way or another. And Pickpocket will make that decision, not me. It'll be very obvious which, ones he, which one he picks uh, when we make the decision. So he's going to school. Three are going to qualify. Now, we thought we had the world by the, you know, thought we had the tiger by the tail, so to speak, with time is on my side. Fantastic start to the year. We gave him a proper little rest, a little mini rest. Brought him back, didn't have to qualify him. Timing was perfect for the series. Use it as a prep for the rest of the year. Everything's going great. Wait now, flag on the play. Uh, four horses entered. Four entered for the series. Series didn't go. Oh, by the way, we changed the qualifying time back to 60 days. Why don't you just leave it at 90 anyway? It's, anyway, whatever. Back to 60 days, now he has to qualify. 71 days next Saturday, he has to qualify. Um, fine, we'll just qualify. So that's what our Tuesday looks like. Probably one of the one of the biggest days of the year thus far in 2024 is going to be qualifiers. And they're not the babies. We got some heavy hitters out on Tuesday, that'll be a, a lot of fun. So Monday afternoon I'll take off the truck and trailer, take the boys over tucked him in over here and uh, get them ready to go. Now that also plays into what else is going to take place Tuesday. I'm going to train insider trading in the morning right ashore. Sure, I haven't completely made my mind up yet. Uh, you know, as I started this video talking about deja vu all over again with the, with the filly, she did this last year, right? Trained down, no hobbles, looked great. Got to the gate and just, it's not the gate. Then I had to explain this to Marco the other day. There's no problem with the gate. You put her nose right on it. Coming off the car, where she switches her leads, switches her gears. First thing she does is touch herself, get out of gear. That's how we lost her last year. Now we had to change her shoes and kind of tighten her hobbles up and screw her down tight last year, and then we got her going. She was fine. Do we have to do that again this year? It's two very different, as I said earlier, two different schools of thought. We'll decide that over the next 24, 48 hours. She can't get shot until Monday morning anyway, so I have time. But she will race next Thursday. She will train on Monday. So we'll get a good, clear view of whether our shoeing help. She's going to train Tuesday, sorry. Or whether our shoeing help. Now, she's not going to train hard, but I will let her bounce a little on the end of it to see how she's traveling with those, uh, with whatever shoes we choose to put on her. On her. Um, so that is insider trading. Pull the shoes, as I said, 
um, earlier, I think, is a, is a nice filly. She is what she is. She's going to get stronger and better as the year goes on. So I'm excited to race her. As I said also, Vaccaro Blue Chip, I think the Lazex will help a bit. But I'm leaning towards a, a, a number of things causing a kind of a flat mile today. I think the the catalyst of all this is maybe he wasn't ready to trot 58 or 59. Maybe I was wrong. Warmed up good, seemed good. So mechanically, if he's good, and there's only a couple of specks of blood there, everything leads to the fact that either he can't go that fast, which he already has, or he's not ready to go that fast because it wasn't an attitude. His attitude was on point today. I just think he was a little tired. Needs some work. We will give it to him. Uh, but the one shining moment of, of the week so far for me, other than Mounts for all winning, a couple of horses racing good, was stay close. Here's the horse that was off six weeks. And, and this is important, so listen to what I'm about to say. Um, stay close never wore a tight hobble. Now, uh, for those of you who watch the races closely or in person at the track, you'll know that sometimes I do tinker with the hobbles. I'll score the horse down and, you know, if it feels to me like maybe they need a little more hobble today or a little less, I'll adjust them accordingly. It's OCD. It's just something that I do. Um, and we know where stay close as hobbles go. Now, all through the fall, it might have changed a hole here or there on any given day or stayed the same, but today, when I went out the track, we might have let them out two, three holes. The reason being, he's refreshed, sounder, he's sharper, he's feeling good, can't be tight. He's been off six weeks. To go out in the maiden, I'm looking, out in the open, I'm looking, I'm like, gee, but you know, this is the type of race where you're watching and saying, come on, someone make a break. And no one made a break. But I knew I could get out, out I knew I could hold position on the six and I could get out in front of the two. Uh, was it the two? Yeah, I think it was the two. And get away fourth. Now, maybe Hunter beats me, maybe he doesn't. Who knows? Maybe I maybe I'll maybe I'll get a fifth or a fourth. A good fourth. Now that was a good mile. 57 and two half mile 54. I didn't check, but I think I'll probably be what five, six lengths. It was a big mile for a horse off off uh, six weeks. Race good, race really good. So I was really pleased with, with stay close. But as I said, going back to to the hobbles, what I meant by that was I had to let them out because his gait he stretched out a little more. He was stretching out a little bit more today. And you could feel it, so I gave him the hobble he needed. Um, and they still ended up a little, felt a little bit tight in the mile, but man, he, he raced really, really good. Really pleased with Stay Close. He's been such a good horse for us. You know, he's, he's not quite an open horse when he's really, really on his game in the middle of the summer. Yeah, you might get a run up the open a couple of times, but Mostly, he's a backup class type horse. Uh, and the one thing that I love about him that he was able to integrate this year to his game was the fact that um, was the fact he could get around a half. I did, you know what? I, I never. I just saw the traffic and I'm like, he did this yesterday, but there was an accident yesterday. I literally sat in park on the highway for 20 minutes yesterday. Uh, didn't matter. I had, I had emails to write, so I. I utilized it at the time the best I could. Um, so stay close. Uh, yeah, that half mile track race at Northfield was good. And um, for him to be able to race on a half opens up uh, at least one, if not a, a few more doors for him also. So uh, looking forward to the rest of the season with him. Um, tomorrow we got well, I'm Fancy Like Born to Dance. They're both in really good spots again. This year, we we're able to utilize those classes really well. I think at the start of the season, and it's not. And the reason we're allowed, we're we're able to, and, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, is because these aren't sire stake horses, right? These aren't horses that are going to go out and win in fifty one. So we get to move them around and put them, you know, put them where they belong, and that uh, that that means a lot, right? Now you look at on uh, irresistible sun is starting out of the eight hole. Got a couple of eight holes on a uh, couple of eight holes on Wednesday. Irresistible Sun's got to go up to the numbers of four, draws the eight hole. That's a tough ask for a three-year-old Colt coming off the shelf. Tough ask. Um, we have a couple of eight holes actually in it. Not very happy about any of them, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. But um, Mel Gibson, now he's in the maiden. And I know I talked to Marco the other day and Marco's worried about him being short and you know, racing on a half. and. 
I, what I what I need everybody, and Marco included, myself included, to understand is it doesn't matter what they did last year. The idea that they're going to be better horses at three than they were at two just because is not evidence driven, right? There's nothing saying that a horse is going to be a better horse at three than he was at two. In fact, there's lots of times it doesn't happen. So I don't know what Mel Gibson's going to do. Was he short the other day? Maybe. Never needed hobbles before. He has them on right now. That's not a half mile track thing. That's a him thing right now. So he's got some stuff to overcome also. But still in a good spot. So him and Irresistible Sun drew poorly. Who else do we got in? Uh, oh, and so did the big filly. Uh, Purple People Eater draws the eight hole. So three eight holes for sure on, on Wednesday. Not a great draw for us. But we'll do what we can do and get them get them raced on uh, Wednesday. We have the horses in in Kentucky Monday, Tuesday. We also have uh, Spitfire Overseas is in Monday in in Southern Ohio. So the only two question marks, I guess, are uh, time is on my side. It's got to qualify. And then race on Saturday, which is not what we wanted to do. So I'm going to qualify them rather easy on, uh, on Tuesday. And also... Um, greatest ending didn't get in and I'm not going to be here next Saturday so Patrick DePrana is going to race next weekend greatest ending is going to race I think Chris Lambs will be fine driving him he'll race next weekend also um and time is on my side as I said to Tim I love the horse because he's fun to drive he does nothing wrong put his nose in the gate drive him however you want and he'll race good he's like a little sports car I don't need to be here to drive time is on my side anybody on earth can drive him so that is what we have right now going on for um, the rest of the week, what took place last week. We have some stuff, we got some housekeeping, we gotta take care of insider trading, we have to take care of uh, Vaccaro Blue Chip and get those horses squared around. We have horses to qualify. We have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff coming up this week. So a very busy week ahead, a very busy month of May coming up. But for now, we're still in the heat of April. I don't mean heat in the literal sense. We are still in the in the trenches here in April trying to get the horses raced, squared away, set up for the rest of the season. Although it hasn't been perfect, it hasn't been great some days, by the time they roll behind the gate at stake season, start of May, I believe we'll have everybody ready to do exactly what they are able to do. So with that, I will let you guys go. Um, I hope it's sunny wherever you are. I hope it's not this. Because it has been a rough week for weather. Rough week. Not a fan of Mother Nature right now. So, I'll let you go. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a great Friday night. Uh, I think Amy and I, I'm trying to talk her into going to the movies. We'll see if I can do that. Although, she jogged a lot of horses in the pouring rain today at the barn. I don't know if she's in the mood to do anything other than make frowning faces at me. So, <laughs> I will talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great day.